And now, Dr. Paul, radio's wonderful story of adult love. Brought to you by the makers of Dutch Mill Cheese. Every day, your family needs milk or milk product with their meals. In fact, United States government food research experts say so. That's why it's important for you to know this about Dutch Mill American cheese. Dutch Mill contains the important food elements of milk. Protein, calcium, phosphorus, and all the other vital nutrients. And gives them to you in a mild, rich cheese that's delicious any way you serve it. You see, Dutch Mill is made exclusively from deep-flavored cheddars choice American cheddars that have been made with special care, then ripened slowly and thoroughly. Dutch Mill is a cheese so mild and rich, so tender and mellow, it's delicious to eat and a joy to cook with. So pick up a package or two of Dutch Mill cheese the next time you go shopping. Compare its quality and flavor. If you aren't completely satisfied, your money will be refunded without question. You'll find Dutch Mill featured at your Safeway store. Now, our story continues. Dr. Paul Bott tried to sleep and couldn't. He believed it was the storm that was keeping him awake and that his thoughts were the product of his insomnia. But actually, his sleeplessness was the result of the thoughts that kept coursing through his mind. In just a few more days, he and his wife Elizabeth will be leaving Elkhorn City for the east. Dr. Paul tried to concentrate on that on all the things that had to be done at the hospital before he left. But his mind kept returning to the question of Virginia Martin, the scene at the bus station, her strange, hurried departure tonight. He wondered why he felt he knew and understood her so well when actually he knew so very little about her. He wondered why she wanted to lose herself this way, to sever completely the ties that had grown since her arrival in this little town some weeks ago. Then the steady sound of the rain the circular pattern of his mental processes began to take effect. Dr. Paul was just beginning to go to sleep when the phone by his bed rang sharply. His wife, Elizabeth, switched on the lamp as Dr. Paul reached over and... Hello? What? When? How many? Yes. Yes, I'll be there right away. Has something happened, Dick? You sounded so serious. I have to get over to the hospital right away. Elizabeth, you'd better get your father up. Dad? Why? They've just brought two men into the hospital. There was some sort of explosion at the cement plant tonight. Oh, Paul. Were many men hurt? I don't know yet, but it sounds pretty serious. Why haven't they notified Dad? Well, they probably called his house. After all, they wouldn't know he was spending the night here. Hurry, Elizabeth, will you? You'll probably want to go to the hospital with me. Oh, yes, of course, Paul. I'll be right back, Paul. Okay, Yes? Come in, dear. Come in. Oh, you haven't gone to bed yet. That's good. Oh, no, no. I was just reading for a while. Oh, what's the matter? There's been an accident at the cement plant. No. Some kind of explosion. The hospital phone, Paul. Well, what happened? How much damage did it do? I don't know, Dad. Paul just told me they brought two men into the hospital. I don't even know which plant it is. It's the one on the highway to Ridgefield. How do you know? I know, all right. Well, how can you be so positive? Elizabeth, where's the switch in here? I... Never mind, I found it. What are you going to do? Come on the plant, of course. Paul thought you might want to go over to the hospital with him. Shall I tell him? Yes, yes, of course I do. Ask him to wait for me, will you? All right, Dad. Paul, is there anything I can do to help? No, thanks, Elizabeth. I'm almost ready. Uh, What about your father? He's dressed. He hadn't gone to bed. He's phoning the plant now. Mm. Hand me that shirt, will you? Mm -hmm. Here. Thanks. 
No, never mind the tie. I can't get the point. Evidently, the lines are down. Paul, did the hospital say how much damage had been done? I don't know anything as yet, Jonathan. I've got to get out there. Don't you think you should find out about the men who've been hurt first, Jonathan? Well, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'll stop off at the hospital first. All right, then. Let's go. And a few minutes later, at Miles Memorial Hospital, Dr. Paul Buck was met at the entrance by his head nurse, Dolly May Tucker. He was questioning her tersely as the two hurried towards the elevator, leaving Jonathan Smith alone. Dr. Paul's father-in-law walked over towards the desk to ask a few questions of the telephone operator when a man hurried out of the reception room and... Mr. Smith. Hi, Goody. What are you doing here? I came in. Figured I had to get in touch with you. The phone out at the plant's dead. Yeah, I know. I just tried to call out there. Come on, we'd better go in here while we can talk. I've been trying my darndest to get to you ever since I got in town. I've been calling your house every Friday. Never mind that now. What happened? What do you think? The boiler blew up. What else? Lucky nobody much was around that end of the plant when it let go. Well, that's something. It's a little early to talk about being lucky. What time did it happen? Oh, about 8 o'clock. Huh? And you were just now getting to town? Well, it's a long story, Mr. Smith. Judas, I've never seen such a night. Everything went wrong. Yeah. That's an understatement. You see, we couldn't get nobody to come to us, and we couldn't get back into town. The roads flooded bad at the fork. But as it happened, a bus... Never mind that now. What about the men who were hurt? Oh, just a couple of the guys. The, the Paulson kid. Billy? And... Yeah. Pretty badly burned. Oh. What do they say about him here at the hospital? That's another thing. I can't get anything out of Dr. Cabot or the nurses. Well, he'll probably be all right. Anyway, we don't have to worry about him. You don't have to worry about Billy talking, Mr. Smith, because he doesn't know anything about the setup out at the plant. Good. Who else was hurt? Harry Wilkinson. Oh. And that guy has plenty cause to worry. I told you from the first that I didn't think you should fool around with that guy. He's too much of a nervous type. You know, he... Oh! Shut up, Peg. Okay, sorry. Has he said anything? Wilkinson? No, he's been out like a light. Got uh, some kind of concussion, a, a fractured skull or something. I see. Do you leave anybody out at the plant? Sure. Couldn't bring them in. All the rest of the men are there. And Harry Wilkinson's wife and a couple of guys from the bus. What? Wilkinson's wife? What the devil is she doing there? Well... Judas, Mr. Smith, I... Uh-huh. The other man you mentioned. What bus? Why didn't they come in with you? Why'd you leave them out there to poke around? Nobody's going to do any poking around, Mr. Smith. And, and I tell you, I couldn't bring them in. Oh, the devil did you get in? I came in the bus. What's all this about a bus, anyway? I'm trying to tell you. The bus was on the highway when the boiler blew. They saw the explosion and came up to see what happened. Since when does a transportation company allow sightseeing detours? Well, you see, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Wilkinson was on the bus, and uh, I guess they couldn't do anything else. She was pretty hysterical when they got there. So anyway, I'd sent one of the boys into town for the doctor, but he'd had to go to Carterville. Couldn't get back to Alcorn City, you see. Yeah? I wanted to wait there at the plant for the doctor to arrive, but this dame took over, and no matter what... What I... dame? Oh, I don't know who she was. Never saw her before. Seemed to know what to do, though. But uh, a little too smart for my money. What do you mean? Well, I'm coming to that. Anyway, she persuaded Corey Murdoch, that's the bus driver, uh, to try to make it back to town, to Alcorn City. Well, I wasn't going to leave Wilkinson, so I came along. What if he was unconscious? What difference would... Look, Haggerty, you're the plant foreman. Why didn't you stay out there? Well, how was I to know Wilkinson wouldn't come to on the way in? And I didn't like the way that woman was acting. She was too interested in everything. Kept asking a lot of questions. Kept uh, writing stuff down. What do you mean she kept writing stuff down? Well, she was writing out some kind of report. A report? Where is it? I gave it to the nurse. Why, you prize idiot. You gave it to the nurse... What's the matter with you, Hagerty? 
Are you nuts? Oh, wait a minute, boss. It's nothing to get excited nothing about. Nothing to get excited about. Why do you... Yeah, yeah, let me explain. It was just some kind of medical report. I checked it. You sure? You're darn right I am. After all, I'm sitting on the anxious seat, too, you know. Hmm. Now, about this woman. Where is she? I don't know. She blew as soon as we got to the hospital. What do you think, Mr. Smith? I don't know yet. As far as I'm concerned, I don't like it. I got a feeling there's going to be too many questions asked. And if they don't get the right answers, there could be trouble. Trouble for both of us. Uh Hmm. And I can't afford any trouble. Not right now. Neither can I. Well, don't worry. I can handle it. After all, it's just one of those regrettable, unavoidable accidents. No cause for anyone to suspect it was anything else. Yeah, but suppose people start snooping around. The safety commission, for instance, and that woman, whoever she is. But you told me the report she wrote was only a medical one. Yeah, I know, I know, but that doesn't have anything to do with the kind of question she was asking. And I might add, I didn't go much for Corey Murdoch's attitude. He said something... Uh, You're just jumpy, Haggerty. That's easy for you to say, Mr. Smith, because you're the boss. Sure, you're you're probably okay. Guys like you never take the rap. Haggerty, get this through your head. There's no need for anyone to get curious about tonight. Why should they? Now stop being so jumpy. But you don't get it, Mr. Smith. It's Wilkinson I'm worried about. You don't know him like I do. You haven't been around him like I have. He wasn't cut out for that job you gave him. And I tell you, he'll talk. Hmm. You think so, huh? Darn right I do. No, he won't. You sound pretty sure. I am. Wilkinson won't say a thing. And at that moment, up in surgery, Dr. John Cabot is operating on Harry Wilkinson. I wonder what it is that Mr. Smith and his foreman are afraid of. Having trouble with your food budget lately? If rising food prices are becoming a problem, you may want to try this. Many homemakers have learned that they can save money and add delightful variety to their meals at the same time by serving cheese dishes more often. Well, a good cheese like Dutch Mill American will add flavor and heartiness to ever so many favorite dishes. I think you'll like Dutch Mill, too, because it's made with special care from choice deep-flavored cheddars. Choice American cheddars that have been ripened slowly and thoroughly, then blended into modern Dutch Mill American. Dutch Mill is so mild and rich... So tender and mellow, it's downright delicious to eat and a joy to cook with. Get a package or two right away. If you aren't delighted, the full purchase price will be refunded without question. You'll find Dutch Mill cheese featured at your Safeway store. If it happens to be out of stock at the moment, please try again. And thanks for your consideration. Dr. Paul Bach sees the report that has caused so much comment. A report made on the two injured men shortly after the accident by the young woman whose whereabouts and identity seem to be unknown. But what strikes Dr. Paul is that the handwriting seems somehow familiar. Join us at this same time every Monday through Friday. This is Jack Moyle saying, for a treat in cheese, try Dutch Mill, please. Dr. Paul, written by Virginia Crosby, is directed by George L. Fogel. 